part and we are recording. So welcome to our second session in our series um, of exploring your health indicators and today's topic is going to be cholesterol and triglycerides. We still have two additional sessions left in our series and that's going to be one in May and one in June on Tuesdays from two to three Eastern Standard Time. So if you have someone you wanna share with that might be interested in one of the two topics that are remaining, please feel free to have them register. Um, at the end of the survey for today, just like session one, we'll, it'll link you straight to that registration page as well. And the webinar is brought to you by the University of Florida IFAS Extension. And just a quick reminder of some Zoom features, which we're probably all familiar with these days, but at the bottom, because today I am going to ask you to uh, participate in the chat um, on a couple of our questions. So if you see, if you hover down at the bottom of your screen, or if you're on a cell phone, you might have to swipe left or right, and you can click that chat box and it should pop open. And then in the chat box where you see the drop down menu, you can either send a chat directly to us as panelists, or you can send it to all participants. And we love engagement throughout our, um, our webinars. And today's webinars team is Angela Hinkle, and she's an extension agent in Escambia County. Hi, I'm Wendy Lynch. I'm extension agent also in, or in Putnam County. And we have Dr. Wendy Dahl, associate professor and extension specialist at the University of Florida and Julie England, who is an extension agent emeritus who runs our logistics behind the scenes and keeps us on track. And also a very special thank you again to uh, Daniela Rivera Mendoza for developing the slides for today's presentation. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Angela for our talk. All right, so today we are going to cover dyslipidemia. So we're going to talk about what that is the types, what are the normal levels, knowing your numbers and how that works with what are normal levels. And then also some of the results and consequences that may not be wanted if your numbers are not uh, where you want them to be or your medical provider want them to be. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Dyslipidemia, when we say that what we're what we're referring to is unhealthy levels of one or more different types of fats or lipids that are in your blood. And that dyslipidemia can be caused by several different factors. Some of those you may not really be able to have a whole lot to, to, to be able to change. Um, advancing age, hopefully we are all advancing in age. Um, our family history. That's not something that we can generally change, but if you have one or, or both parents who have uh, dyslipidemia, that can be um, a, a risk factor. There are things um, that are medical conditions, diabetes, which we had talked about in the last uh, webinar that we had, chronic kidney disease, hypothyroidism, those are things that are, are medical conditions. We uh, need to watch out for things like obesity, our very sedentary lifestyles, uh, if we're smoking, um, the amount of alcohol that we consume, and also the consumption of um, foods that tend to be high in saturated fats, trans fats, and also sugars. And I know that sometimes it can be a little confusing to know what types of fat are what, um, but I, I had someone once who told me that they were watching their cholesterol and they found out how much fat was in an avocado. So they weren't gonna eat avocados anymore. Well, there is a lot of fat in avocados, but not uh, cholesterol and not, not the, the saturated fat. It's a, a mono unsaturated fat, a, a healthier fat that tends not to clog things up and, and cause problems. So though we still may wanna watch all of our fats and not consume too many, um, that was one that um, we could probably have more of, the ones we really want to watch out for, the, the problem causers, those, those foods high in the saturated fats and the trans fats and, and the added sugars. All right, so we have these lipids in our, in our blood, and there are, there are some main ones that we're going to talk about today. So there's 
the um, LDL cholesterol, there is the HDL cholesterol, and there are those triglycerides. And that all together um, makes up the sum of our, our, our total cholesterol that we have in our body. All right, so going back to these, the low density lipoprotein, that's the LDL, that's considered the bad cholesterol. And one way to um, think about LDL, we want that to be a low number, which we're gonna talk about in a little while, but LDL starts with L and we want that to be low. And sometimes it's also thought of as the lousy cholesterol or even the lethal cholesterol that, that some people will use. So that's a, a way to, to think of that. The HDL, the high density lipoprotein, now that's considered the good cholesterol. HDL, you want that number to be high. It starts with H, so does high. It's the helpful, it's the healthy cholesterol. So it's the good one. And we have triglycerides, which come from uh, the foods that we eat and they're made in the body. And they're also, because we are a very efficient um, body in the way that we work, we store those and then we re and they're released later on if we need them. All right, so normal, what's normal? Oh boy. So when we talk about total overall cholesterol, generally speaking, we're looking for a number that is less than 200. So a lot of times that might be the only number that you get when you get your cholesterol checked. But there's also, remember that, that LDL, that bad cholesterol, we want that to be low, we want that to be less than 100. The HDL, that good cholesterol, we would like that to be high, higher than 60. And then those triglycerides, we're looking for those to be less than 150. And one of the good things that you can really do all the time is talk to your medical provider and ask, you know, you, you may not remember these numbers. Um, and even if you do, it's still good to ask, what do those numbers mean? Is that good? Is that bad? What does that mean for me? Um, and it may not be good on the normal scale, but maybe if you've had your cholesterol checked before and you're having it checked again, it's better now than it was before. So those are things to, to look at, but these are, these are the normal levels. All right, so when we're, when we're wanting to get our numbers checked, the American Heart Association says that those who are about 20 years old or older should get their cholesterol checked about every four to six years or so. Um, and we wanna make sure that, again, we're, 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 we're getting all the different numbers checked, if, as many as we can. Um, but if you have some of those risk factors that we talked about before, or you've already had heart disease, then we may get the recommendation to get those uh, blood lipid, excuse me, blood lipid levels checked more often. Okay, so if we're going back to dyslipidemia, some unwanted results when you get these numbers is that you get a higher than normal total cholesterol level, or you get a, um, or excuse me, yeah, a higher than normal total cholesterol, a higher than normal um, LDL or the triglyceride levels. Um, it can also mean that you have your HDL levels, which you want to be high, those may be lower than normal. So one of the things, if you can take a look at this, um, this is our, our, um, our artery over here on the left. Thank you. <laughs> and so we're looking at this, <clears throat> this is the view of the inside of our artery and it is so big, okay? And, it, and it's made so that a certain amount of um, the, our blood is going to flow through it in the right direction, at the right speed, again, the right amounts. But what starts to happen sometimes, uh, one of these unwanted results, uh, especially if we have um, th this buildup of the, of the LDL cholesterol, 
we have our artery wall and we have the opening where the blood flows through, but that LDL cholesterol, that bad cholesterol can start to build up and form plaque on the walls of the arteries. And the more plaque there is, the harder it is for that blood to get through. So for those of you who remember, and I am probably definitely aging myself here, um, is that the HDL cholesterol is something that is that good cholesterol. It helps to move the LDL cholesterol along and get it out of the way. It's sort of nature's roto rooter for any of you who remember what that is. So we want to get that, that bad cholesterol, that plaque buildup out of the way. And the good cholesterol is very important for that. I know that one of the other folks who was on the last webinar we had, she had told me that somebody came to her and said, I'm going to get my levels down so that they're zero. I won't have any cholesterol. Well, we don't want that. <laughs> we want that good cholesterol to be in there. And that helps um, to make everything just the way it needs to be to keep that good blood flowing in our, our, um, our arteries, our blood vessels. Okay. So some of the consequences, things that can happen when our levels are not so good high levels of the LDL or low levels of the HDL can lead to that plaque buildup in your blood vessels. And um, this can happen also with those high triglycerides. And so if that blood cannot get through the way that it needs to, some of these consequences are a heart attack, a stroke, um, there's other health problems and also um, those high triglycerides can lead to something called acute pancreatitis. So those are some things that we really wanna watch out for. So I think Wendy's gonna take us now and tell us about some things that maybe we can do after I've told you all of the, the good, the bad and the, and the ugly here. What are, what are some things that we need to watch out for and, and what we can do? You got it. So we're gonna shift over and uh, share some things that you can do to make improvements um, for your numbers. And the first one is to know your numbers. Um, you are your best advocate um, by knowing your numbers. Basically, you're, you're kind of jumping in there, finding out what your risk is and gives you that opportunity to do something about it. Part two is quit smoking. And this includes not only cigarettes, but also vaping. So both smoking and vaping are going to lower your HDL cholesterol, that healthy cholesterol that Angela was mentioning. So quitting smoking, but I did want to throw in the American Cancer Society, so I don't mess up the numbers here, but the American Cancer Society reports that within minutes of your last cigarette, your body begins to recover. Within two to three months, circulation improves and your lung function increases and stroke risk decreases. Um, in one to two years, your risk of heart attack drops uh, dramatically. So I thought those were some good stats, other reasons to quit smoking aside from cholesterol. Um, the third is maintaining a healthy weight. And with maintaining a healthy weight, um, obesity and um, overweight can contribute to an increase in the LDL. So that lousy or the, um, I can't remember what the other uh, term you used for it, but. Um, one was lethal, which yeah, I'm not so sure that's a bit strong, but nonetheless, <laughs> yeah, <And> then, <laughs> the one that we want to keep low. That's right, keeping it low. Um, also being physically active. So we wanna aim for that 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity per week. Uh, and then finally eating a heart healthy diet, which we're gonna go into in just a few minutes. So uh, I want you guys to go ahead and pop open your chat because we're gonna get do a little interaction here with some myths or is it a fact? And this is from the American Heart Association. So the first question for myth or fact is if the nutrition facts label shows no cholesterol, is the food heart healthy? What do you think? You can type in, yeah, there we go. We've got no, not necessarily, no, no, maybe not always, no. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, let's see what American Heart Association says. It is a myth and that's at the top. So, but the fact is you need to check your nutrition facts label, not only for the cholesterol, but Angela mentioned about the saturated and trans fats too. Cause I, you know, I think about when your grandma said, don't pour the hot grease down the sink because it clogs the pipes. So it's like that thick saturated fat and trans fat is gonna clog your pipes and we wanna keep them nice and healthy. All right, here's the second one, myth or a fact. 
only overweight and obese people have high cholesterol. No, 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 no. Myth, myth, myth. No, no, myth, myth. No, false. No, myth. All right. <laughs> All right. As are rock stars, because you are correct. That is yes, we have a very smart group. <laughs> so being overweight or obese does in, um, increase your risk of high cholesterol. It does raise that LDL. However, anybody, any um, body type can have cholesterol. So that's why it's so incredibly important to get your numbers checked and follow some of those things that we're getting ready to, to talk a little bit more about. Eating a heart healthy diet. So we already mentioned a few others, but eating a heart healthy diet, and that's going to be choosing your fruits and veggies, whole grains, um, opt for that low fat or fat free dairy or non fat dairy um, more often because of the saturated fats. Also with fish, choosing a lean meat, fish, poultry, nuts, and keeping your saturated fats down. And one way to do that is reducing them, your red meat intake or processed meats. And then there's also a resource, which I will, I don't know if I can do it while I'm in the middle of the, the talk, but I will drop that link into the chat before we close up today. And that's about the DASH diet. And so that's the dietary approaches to stop hypertension. And so it's gonna follow very similar um, steps that you see within this slide. So the veggies and the fruits and the whole grains, um, low and non-fat dairy, as well as the fish, poultry and nuts. So a few other things that you can do to um, eat a heart healthy diet, and that's gonna be reducing that intake of saturated and trans fats. So I already mentioned about the processed meats and some of the red meats, but what are some other things that you think that would work for you to reduce the amount of saturated fat? So let's think about like cooking methods. What are some things that you could do in the kitchen to reduce that saturated intake, saturated fat intake? So if I'm preparing, oh, thank you, Julie. Oh, okay, using a healthy oil, using some healthy cooking methods, most definitely. Bake and broil. Mm-hmm. So what about if I've got a big old slab of steak and I've got a nice little white marble on the side? Um, I'd probably want to cut that off. I know some folks will say that's the best part, but that's where you're going to find some of those, that extra fat. Um, but we do want to limit our red meat intake as well. Limiting fried food. I already mentioned about processed and red meats and then preparing foods with healthy oils. So in lieu of butter, lard, or shortening, um, aim for like the olive oil. I think someone mentioned that in the chat. So olive oil, canola oil, any of the oils that are going to have, um, that are going to be uh, liquid at room temperature. So your vegetable oils. And then also reducing your consumption of sugar sweetened beverages. And let me make sure I, I say this accurately. So this was a report from the American Heart Association um, from February, 2020. And they reported that drinking 12 ounces, so that's a little can size, 12 ounces of a sugary beverage more than once a day may lower your HDL. So that's your healthy cholesterol. And so by drinking that one soda or sugary sweetened beverage um, per day can lower or may lower your HDL cholesterol and increase your triglycerides. So the things that we're, tr what we're trying not to do. So by reducing that consumption of sugar sweetened beverage, you may be on your way to reducing your cholesterol. So again, we talked about knowing your numbers and the importance of speaking with your healthcare provider to get your numbers, stay on point with that. That way you, if you know your risk, you can start to do something about it. Also quitting smoking, maintaining a healthy weight, being active and whatever activity looks like for you. It doesn't mean you have to um, join a gym or a certain class is just getting out and moving more. So that could be swimming, biking, hiking, whatever it is that you like to do. It's just being consistent with those things um, and aiming for, for that 150 minutes per week. And then finally, eating a heart healthy diet. And thank you, Julie, for throwing that in the chat for us today. So if you didn't see it, it, the DASH diet, please scroll up in the chat. It's a great resource, um, has a lot of great tips. So today it was kind of a short and sweet, but we talked about the different types of um, LDL, HDL, different types of cholesterol, as well as the causes of high cholesterol, some things that we can change and some things we cannot. 
Um, and then also the levels to aim for. So knowing your numbers, um, where are they? And like Angela said earlier, you know, if you're still pretty high, but you're making progress, you're in the right direction. And that is going to be it for today's short session, but we are going to send out a quick survey also uh, at the end of today's presentation, and we would appreciate your feedback on that. Any suggestions you have for future sessions, you can also add it to that survey. Just a few resources from today's session, and let me go ahead and I'm going to stop the recording and we'll open it up for questions and 